Hello internet allies, how are you doing? So, recently I watched a YouTube video from Kick the PJ, one of my favourite YouTubers, and he was talking a little bit about like nine of the most influential games in his life, the nine games which has kind of basically shaped up his life, shaped up who he is and whatnot, and I thought it'd be a fun idea to do the same for myself. So these aren't necessarily my nine favourite games of all time, but these are the nine games that have like had the biggest impact on me. So, here we go. Okay, you can see my Overwatch hoodie, so I'm just gonna talk about Overwatch. <laughs> I think what's really lovely about this game is that it's quite a fun kind of first-person shooter. It's kind of like a bit more sort of like light-hearted compared to a lot of other first-person shooters, which is what I really like. I like how like each character is like ex extremely distinctive. As you can tell by the hoodie, I am a Sombra main. Like, I love Sombra so much. I love how like sassy she is and yeah, how she's able to just get whatever she wants really and whatnot. It is like kind of one of those like comfort games for me really and whatnot. And I think I got like so obsessed with it that like, you know, I end up like sort of using real money to buy like, the, buy loot boxes so I can unlock all the costumes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really play Overwatch as much nowadays, but I this game still holds a lot of fond memories for me. I think I'm just going to mention this, like, every time I get to talk about Overwatch, but I did meet, like, some of the Overwatch voice actors and actresses at Comic-Con a few years ago, and they were all really lovely, despite one of them ironically losing their voice, <laughs> which was actually the voice of Sombra, so there you go. <laughs> yeah, but the voice of Symmetra was really, really nice and whatnot as well, so, so there you go. And what I really love is how like community focused sort of the cast of Overwatch is as well. Like, you know, they they really get into their characters and they're really quite passionate about the game as well. And I'm quite excited to see what Overwatch 2 brings as well. So the next game I'm gonna talk about because Sonic is one of my favorite characters ever in all of anything. So I have to include a Sonic game. It was really hard to choose between Sonic Heroes and Sonic Generations. I think I'm going to go choose Sonic Generations because it is my favourite Sonic game. Sonic Heroes was the first Sonic game I ever played and I was obsessed with it. It kind of introduced me to Sonic and yeah, just made me fall in love with like the characters and like it was just such a fun game, such a fun soundtrack and whatnot. It may not be the best game ever but Sonic Heroes still holds a special place in my heart. So the reason why I love Sonic Generations so much is because it just it just celebrates like all things Sonic and everything up to the point of this game coming out in a great package where you can play as classic Sonic and modern Sonic throughout like all of Sonic's history up to that point like I said and you know, they have like some of Sonic's most famous, most iconic levels in multiple Sonic games as well, which was great. Of course, the soundtrack is great. And also, this is actually the first PlayStation game I actually ended up getting a platinum trophy for. So, of course, this has a massive place in my heart. And also, it kind of brings back like all my favourite Sonic characters as well. So, you got your Sonics, your Shadows, your Knuckleses, <laughs> your Tailses. <laughs> Yeah, that, that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, really good game. I love this game. It is like my favorite Sonic game. This is my favorite Sonic game, and this is the game I'm going to include in the list. Sonic Heroes is an honorable mention, though. The third one I'm going to mention, again, this, I was torn between two games from this series, but it is kind of the series that has my favorite game of all time in. So we've got Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and Super Smash Bros. Brawl. So Smash Ultimate is my favorite game of all time because it is just a fan service in a game, you know, it has like a lot of iconic characters in it. It has like every, every single character that's ever been in Super Smash Bros, most stages, and it's just got so much awesome content. However, I am going to choose Super Smash Bros Brawl for the next game because I remember when this game quite came out or like the build up to it, I've never been so excited for a game ever. <laughs> Um, I even got like my nan to like pick the um, pick the game up for me from the game store, even though she didn't really know what was going on. <laughs> because yeah, I was at school at the time, and you know I wanted to make sure like I was able to play Super Smash Bros. Brawl as soon as I came home from school. This was this game was really exciting for me because it introduced a lot of really awesome iconic things for the Super Smash Bros. series. So it introduced like third party characters. You had like Solid Snake and Sonic. 
And of course, like the games after Super Smash Bros. Brawl kind of built up on the third party roster. Um, I've always been a Sonic main since this game came out. Um, also the Subspace Emissary, like brilliant um, story mode and whatnot, where you have like all the characters teaming up and collaborating with each other. Also the first Super Smash Bros. game to introduce online play. So, so that's awesome as well. Um, also, Super Smash Bros. is my favourite game to play with friends as well. Um, I would more play Super Smash Bros. Ultimate now, but um, but yeah, Super Smash Bros. Brawl definitely still holds a place, a special place in my heart. So another one of my favourite video game franchises ever is Kingdom Hearts, and of course, like Sora was the last character to be added into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. And the first game I played in the Kingdom Hearts series, and probably my favourite game in the Kingdom Hearts series, is Kingdom Hearts 2. Now, the reason why Kingdom Hearts is such a special franchise to me is that basically whenever a new Kingdom Hearts game comes out, pretty much like everything reminds me of Kingdom Hearts. It's crazy, it's like every song like I hear on like the radio or every new music release, it could be something to do with that. You know, I could like imagine it in this game or something like that. Uh, <laughs> also, you know, it kind of introduced me actually to some Disney movies that I really love today, such as like A Nightmare Before Christmas as well. Sora is basically just a dream video game character. You know, he gets to befriend like all the Disney characters and travel to all the worlds and everything. I want to be Sora. <laughs> So there you go. Yeah, um, but Kingdom Hearts, I really love it because actually it introduces my favourite Kingdom Hearts character, actually Roxas. Um, and I think it's just like the gameplay in general is really, really good in this game as well. I think that's why I really like it. And also, this game actually made me really fall in love with Winnie the Pooh as well, one of my favourite every Disney characters. So. So there's that as well, because Winnie the Pooh is like incredibly cute in this game. Moving on to the next game. So again, this is like my favorite game in one of my favorite franchises is Pokemon. And my favorite game is Pokemon Soul Silver. I've got Pokemon Soul Silver. Yeah, I missed out on playing Pokemon Original Silver. So this was the introduction to this game. And I really love this. This one is like my favorite Pokemon game. What I really love about this game is that you do get to travel around with a Pokemon walking beside you and whatnot. And you could even, I think it even came with like one of those like Pokemon pedometer things. So you could actually like take your Pokemon out like a Tamagotchi and walk around with your Pokemon so that you level them up and get some steps and whatnot. Um, also, you know, after kind of going through Johto, you get to go through Kanto again. So it's like two Pokemon regions in one. The so next up is probably my favorite 3DS game. Um, and probably the one that I've spent the most hours playing, which is Animal Crossing New Leaf. Now, I know that Animal Crossing New Horizons has lots of different customization options for your island and everything. But Animal Crossing New Leaf, I just really enjoyed this game a lot. You know, you were the mayor of your town city thing. I think I called it like New Heaven or something like that in this game. Because <laughs> I remember playing Animal Crossing Wild World and um, City Folk. Um, but this one, you know, took everything from those, what made those games really good and made them a whole lot better in my opinion. I think what I really liked about this one as opposed to New Horizons, which I don't really have anymore. Um, I think with New Horizons, you know, it did feel very like start from scratch kind of thing. And, you know, I built up a lot of progression in this game and, you know, to have to like start that all over again and whatnot was just very time consuming, to be honest. Also, what I really love about this is that I ended up getting like one of my favorite ever vid villages in this game, Drago who is a dragon <laughs> villager, which is absolutely amazing. Next up is probably the game I've played the most on the Nintendo Switch. So this is gonna be a bit of an odd choice, but hear me out. Ring Fit Adventure, right. So this game was awesome because it is actually a really good workout for, for you, <laughs> to be honest. Like, yeah, it does make you feel like you've actually done a proper workout after playing this game each time. 
and yeah, it, it did wonders for helping me keep fit during the pandemic and whatnot. And you know, I like how this game is kind of like a sort of an alternate. So if I can't make it to the gym some days, you know, I can just play this and do a workout on Ring Fit. And some of the exercises I will admit are a bit repetitive and it would be great to have like a sort of sequel to this game. But I still really enjoyed this game. Like, Next up is a game I was completely obsessed with a few years ago, Persona 5. Oh my gosh, Persona 5 is amazing. Like, I love the art style, I love the characters, just everything about this game I love. And yeah, I was really obsessed with this and whatnot, and you know, it kind of made me feel like I want my own band of Phantom Thieves in my own life, to be honest, made up from some of my own friends and whatnot. Even though now, thinking about it, like now, like time, as time's gone on, like I don't necessarily feel like a lot of my friends probably would be good Phantom Thieves for different reasons, you know? I think the only thing about this game is that you need to set aside a lot of time to play it. It is really long. Like, you know, I think, um, just kind of just playing through the main story took me about like 100 hours i'm not even exaggerating there and this was like over the space of like a few months so the final game i'm going to mention in this video might be a little bit of an obscure one but i think that's the reason why i want to talk about it yeah, and that is rhythm thief and the empress treasure and this was made by sega it's a rhythm action slash puzzle game you play as this character phantom r who he is the rhythm thief and what he ends up doing is he ends up stealing pieces of artwork but then replacing them with the real ones because they don't really know that like they are the fake ones that are actually in the museums <laughs> um so you kind of follow like along with his antics and everything and whatnot um trying not to get caught of course and whatnot um, and it is a really fantastic game and I was like really obsessed with this game when it came out. One thing I sort of found interesting is that actually a couple of years ago, like when I first started uh, making TikTok videos was that um, like a very well used TikTok sound is actually from this game and nobody knows about it. <laughs> I'm just like, if you use that sound on TikTok, play this game, for heaven's sake. Honestly, it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, it also takes place in Paris as well. So I, lo I love Paris, so yeah, brilliant game. As well as the sound on TikTok, this game does actually have a fantastic soundtrack. So it's definitely worth checking out if you can find this game. I mean, to be honest, I think I found it hard to find this game anyway. I think at the time, I think I ended up finding it in like a Sainsbury's or something like that. So, so yeah, I'm lucky to find this in the most random place ever, but it's a really good game. Thoroughly recommend it. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what nine games have shaped your life the most. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye.